Welcome back everyone. Today we have a very interesting topic talking about PhD papers. So uh, as a PhD student, PhD researcher, as well as as a researcher later on, you will have to write quite a few good papers, research publications, as well as conference proceeding papers. And uh, the, the, there is always uh, quite a lot to learn of how to write these. I must say that at the beginning, the first couple of papers to write is a whole new experience. Uh, you will spend quite a lot of time going back and forth and revising the paper, uh, even 10, 20 times, that's quite common. But as you get along later on, you will manage to squeeze that time and you will produce better papers. So there is a number of good things to actually know beforehand but practicing of writing a paper is the ultimate way of getting a paper done. So there are mainly three things that matter when you write a paper. The first one is what is the type of research that you're doing. The second is whether there is innovation in that paper. And the third is about impact. So how impactful is that paper to the people, right? To the society, not always and not only to the researchers working in that area, but to the greater, actually, community. So you need to make sure that you clarify what are these three things in your research before you write a paper in order to be able to write it in a good way. Now, there is something that people are confusing quite often, and that is the novelty with the utility of the paper. I'll give you an example. If you invent something, say, in medicine, Usually, that is novel, because nobody has invented it before and it speaks to everyone, it's something that uh, it will make a better world tomorrow. However, in other disciplines, like in engineering that I belong, writing something supposed to be novel doesn't necessarily make it novel, because people cannot really translate that. It doesn't really mean anything to their everyday life. So what we need to do is to make it usable, or better say, reusable, something that people can understand and they can use it or reuse it in a similar fashion, in a similar way for their research or for their applications. Now, before we actually go about how a paper should be structured and how you can write a paper, let's talk a little bit about telling the idea what it is. First of all, having an idea, having a research idea, it doesn't necessarily mean that this is something novel. And ultimately, having an idea doesn't mean that this is realistic. If you don't speak out the idea, if you don't put it on the paper, you don't publish the paper, the paper is not distributed, it's not disseminated, then certainly it's not a research idea and it's not something that people can get the benefit from. Think about Mozart. If Mozart had actually just had everything in his mind or he was just writing some nice compositions and keep them in his uh, shelf, then we wouldn't know about Mozart today. So you need to make sure that everything you have as an idea, you can convey it in a proper way, you can put it in the paper, you can publish the paper, and then it becomes something useful and impactful for the community. Now, something else that you should know about the papers. You may have 10 ideas, you may have 20 ideas, it doesn't matter. I'd rather have each paper presenting one idea or maybe a couple of them if they can be combined, rather than having 10 ideas in one paper. You definitely do not want to confuse the readers. You want to make a very clear impact. There is need to be a scientifically sound paper, certainly, it doesn't have to be a very small paper or something that is a very quick and it doesn't have any impact itself, but it doesn't have to be bringing everything all together in one single document. People that need time to chew and understand the information anyway, so it's good if you are actually presenting one idea in one paper. I'm not talking about breaking down the research to publish more and more papers. I'm actually talking about presenting something in a very clear and concise way. And the main idea of the paper is the following. So, say that in the paper. Say, what is the idea of the paper? What you're trying to achieve? What you're trying to solve? What is the problem? 
and what you will be doing in this paper. At some point in the paper, it's better actually to write. The idea is to sort out this. Another thing is that when students are working on the papers, they start with the idea, then they do the research, and then they write the paper. To me, that is a bad way of organizing your structure. You should start with having an idea, then start writing the paper, and then actually do the research. Because as you get along writing the paper, you understand what you need to be doing for completing it, for making clear arguments, for presenting everything in the right order, and then you know what needs to be done actually to complete that research. So writing the paper, structuring the paper, writing everything down is extremely important to be done at the very early on stage. You cannot leave that until the very end because you may have done a research that cannot actually be formulated in a paper or if it does, the paper is lacking of certain information that is extremely useful for the readers of the paper. So, use the writing of the paper as a forcing function for actually doing the research, doing the right research at the right stage, and in that way you will see what it requires to make a good paper. It will become clearer to you what you don't understand and you need to do more research on it, and it will crystallize what needs to be done for actually completing that paper successfully. During writing that paper, open the dialogue open the communication and collaborate with others or communicate with others your research. So the paper draft should be a live document that goes back and forth with your supervisor or with other members of your team and make sure that everybody really understands what is written and is placed in the correct order of the paper. It makes much more difference when we read a paper which is well organized and well written rather than a paper that is, uh, it may have very good research in it, but it's all over the place. Another thing is that you don't have to have the most brilliant idea in the world to write a paper. At the end of the day, writing a paper during a PhD is extremely useful exercise. You need to do it, you must learn how to convey the message correctly, how to write an academic document like a paper, and how to organize the methodology, the actual doing of the paper, and then make right conclusions at the end of the paper. So uh, the, the, the whole uh, experience about writing a paper is equally important as actually doing the research for that paper. Needless to say that we never know if some papers are impactful, and it may not be the moment that the paper will be impactful, but it will be later on in a few years' time when the research will be more mature. So it may be that the audience is quite amateur for the research that you're doing at the very moment, but in the future will be one of these papers that it will change something in your field. And this is why I don't really like the idea of uh, measuring the success of the papers in a four or five year time frame, because I believe that there are papers which can uh, uh, make a difference in the longer term where others, there are very recent papers, there are very timely papers. Think about the COVID situation. So if you publish something about COVID today, it may have like thousands of citations, maybe in a few months time. But if you had published it like 10 years ago, you would have none. And today we would get the citations. So it's the same kind of story with all sorts of research. It depends at what level of, of research you're working on and how novel and niche is the area that you're working on for that particular era. Also, it is important to know that the type of writing, it may flourish the idea of the paper itself. Meaning that if you write the paper in a good way, you may even make it look much better than it is to begin with as a research publication. So the writing style is extremely important and I'm not only talking about good English for those who are writing papers in English, but I'm talking about the way that you construct everything, the way they make the arguments in the paper, you connect things from other research and then the way, extremely important, is the way that you write down your conclusions. So to finalize that bit, I believe that 
you should start writing a paper very early on in your research career. So if you're starting the PhD, after a few months that you have done your literature review, you know more or less what's happening, start writing your first paper. You may not have done the actual research, but you have the idea, you know what is the gap in knowledge and what you want to contribute to. So start working on writing the paper and you will see how that will be involving with the time and then you will be adding more and more stuff, more and more research uh, along the way. So starting early is the number one tip. Now let's talk a little bit about the title of the paper. So it definitely needs to be a catchy title. Of course that sometimes is not very scientific and people may argue that a catchy title is not what you're looking for, however a very specific one using the keywords of what you're doing. I would say the truth is somewhere in the middle. So you need a kind of a catchy title, people, more and more people will understand what you're doing. If it's very focused in one particular niche area, maybe you will not be able to attract more readers. So you need some uh, keywords which will be more inclusive. So more and more people in that research area will search for those keywords. Then of course, you need to have something specific in that title, otherwise it will look like you're writing a book. So keep the balance and definitely check whether others have published similar papers with that title, see how well they are doing as papers, which is not very much correlated obviously because it is dependent on the research that they have done, but it does worth checking whether there is another paper with a very same title, avoid that obviously, and just pay a little bit of attention on the title. It's not the uh, most significant part, but it's the first one, that's why I'm saying it. Now, the second thing is the abstract. I believe that the abstract should not be longer than four or five sentences, to be honest. Uh, anything longer than that, it becomes part of the introduction of the paper, and you definitely don't want that. You want more and more people reading a concise and very clear abstract. So keep it clear, full sentences, four or five sentences, and say, what is the problem, and what have you done actually to solve that problem? Another advice about the abstracts is that it's good to start the paper with writing an abstract because that will reorganize yourself, what you have in your mind, what you're trying to achieve. Do that at the very start. But then you should know that at the end of the paper, when you complete writing that paper, most likely you will have to revisit the abstract, go back and revise it accordingly. So that is a common practice that most of us are doing, most of the researchers are doing, what when they're writing uh, the paper. So you need to go back and make sure that the abstract has indeed all these interesting information that will keep the interest of the reader high. Now, the introduction bit. The introduction bit is extremely important because again, is in that first page of the paper and a lot of people tend to read it quite briefly. So it should spark their interest immediately. I don't advise to include too much of a literature review unless it is a review paper. Definitely make some uh, concise statements there and add as many references as possible for those are related to that statement, but don't really extend it too much. You actually want to write more about what uh, the problem is, an example of the problem, and how you solve that problem. A common mistake that a lot of people are doing is that they sound very ambitious. So you should not really sound too ambitious. You should be more realistic rather than ambitious. So after we are presenting what the problem is and you make an example, a good example, a practical example perhaps, then you should say what the contribution of that paper in particular is for solving that problem. It may not have that you have solved all this, the angles of that problem, all the sides of that problem, but you have solved a particular part of that problem and you should list the number of contributions of this paper. Now, it may be that you think you have contributed 10, 15 things. You should not include all these. Usually the contributions are between three and six. Another good comment about the introduction and then the beginning of the paper, just before you actually present the actual research, is that you need to be refutable. For those who don't understand that, refutable means that make the reference and show that you have done it. But it will maybe 
other cases that have not been investigated adequately in this paper. And it's, it's a kind of a way saying at the very early on what the limitations of this paper is, but don't present it as limitations at the beginning because then the reviewer will ask why don't you actually do the work rather than presenting the limitations. It's a very good way of limiting the scope of your paper at the beginning to make it more focused, more precise and solve a particular niche area. Now, after you've done all these, you go then to the main body of paper, which that is the easiest part, I would say, because you present the methodology of how you're going about approaching that problem that you just presented before, and then you are presenting the actual work. That is pretty easy, is straight away. What a lot of early students they do is that they're only presenting the results of the analysis of the experimental work but they don't get into discussing those results and making the links between these results and what's already known from the literature review. So make sure that you create those links. As long as you write these in a very uh, proper way, very academic way, then you have nothing to worry about. The very last thing about a paper is the conclusions. A lot of students, especially early students, they write the title conclusions and then what they're doing is they're highlighting all these things that have been already said in the paper. So I'd rather actually retitle that to concluding remarks because that means that you're just highlighting again all the things that you have said in the paper uh, and keep a conclusion at the very end which can be two three lines the main outcome of that paper. So conclusions and concluding remarks are two different things. Just make sure that you understand the difference and uh, use it properly in your papers. Last but not least is references. Make sure that a paper has a good number of references and has covered anything that should be covered in a paper. It's extremely useful. It will help you also getting more attention in your paper and uh, more people will be reading it. Of course, people that you're citing, they may also cite you back. And, and that helps quite significantly. 